Hey guys, it's Courtney. I'm here with part one of my 10 cards, one kit for the Simon's Stamp June 2019 card kit. Just taking a quick look at what comes in the kit. We have the six by eight stamp set. We have the coconut mini paper blooms. We have four envelopes by Simon's Stamp, three of them metallic. We have some ephemera by Cartabella, as well as some six by six double-sided paper also by Cartabella. This actually matches all of that ephemera. Then we have the Rock Candy, it's clear glitter, and this is by Tim Holtz, as well as a glitter duster that is by Stampers Anonymous. We also have some cardstock by Simon Says Stamp as well. We have green leaf, cotton candy, ivory, and black, and Desert Storm by Nina. We also have the inspiration sheet as well as a list of all of the products. So we're going to jump right into card number one and I'm going to be using a piece of the pattern paper here and I'm going to cut this into three squares. Originally I had cut this to two inch squares and I wanted all of these to fit kind of vertically on my card panel. Realized that they were not going to fit so I ended up cutting these back down to one and a half inch squares and that way they would fit vertically down my card panel. So once that's done, I have a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound card stock here, and this is cut right now. It's cut to five and a half by four and a quarter, and I just kind of laid out my pieces there to make sure that they were going to fit. Going to use a piece of the green leaf card stock from the kit. One half of it will be for my card base, and the other piece I'm going to use for my sentiment strip. I did cut down my panel there. I took a half an inch off the one side, the long side. So I'm going to treat this cardstock here, the green cardstock, with my anti static tool, stamping my sentiment there with Versamark ink, sprinkling on some white embossing powder, and I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. And that embossing powder is Hero Arts. Once that was heat set, I'm gonna bring out my tonic paper trimmer and cut this down into a skinny little strip that will go across my card. It's gonna be a very small sentiment. <laughs> this is definitely a clean and simple card. So once that was done, I'm gonna go ahead and score and use score my green leaf card stock and use my bone folder there to get a good crease. Going to adhere my card panel down to the center of that card base, leaving a border on both sides. And I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And then I am going to use my Scotch Foam Tape to go ahead and pop up my little squares of pattern paper here. And in order to make sure that they are lined up the way I want them to be lined up, I'm going to use my grid mat to kind of mark the center of my card panel and use my T-square ruler to make sure that the first one is straight and then I'm just going to kind of eyeball the other two. Now I'm not really sticking this on, I'm kind of just laying them down at first and once I'm happy with the placement I'll go ahead and stick those down permanently. The Scotch foam tape does stick pretty good <laughs> so you don't, we will definitely don't want to add any pressure until you're happy with the placement. So once I was happy with the placement, I'm going to go ahead and add my sentiment strip there and I want that to go directly on the center square there. But some of it is going to hang off the sides. So I'm going to take little teeny tiny pieces of scotch foam tape for either side and then I'll use my Tombow Mono Multi Glue for the middle where it's laying flat on that piece of pattern paper that's already popped up so I don't need to add any more dimension to the middle just the sides so that it lays flush against the entire card once that was done that was it I left this as is that's card number one jumping right into card number two I'm going to take another piece of Nina Solar White and I'm going to use my Misty for this because this is the first time I'm stamping this and obviously it's quite a large image I'm going to use the rectangle frame that's part of the stamp set 
and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this out with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 because it is a Copic Safe ink. I did end up stamping this twice. Like I said, sometimes the first time you stamp an image, you don't get the greatest impression, and the larger the stamp is, the harder it is to get a good impression the first time. So once that was stamped out, we are going to go ahead and move on to the Copic coloring, and I kept the Copic coloring very simple for this. I am going to leave all of it in just so that you can see the color combinations that I used. But for this first group of leaves here, I'm going to go right in with my darkest color. Because these are super teeny tiny areas, I'm not really too concerned about having the paper saturated. I am adding a little bit of shading on the base of each of these leaves as well as the tip of each of these leaves. That way, once we have the highlight in the center, it will kind of appear as if the leaf has some shape to it, as if it's kind of bowed out or bent out a little bit. I colored the other bunch of leaves that appeared to be the same, the same way with the same color combination, so I won't show you that, but um, we'll move on to the second set of leaves, and I'm going to be using a different set of greens here. And for these, I am just adding some shading to the base of the little leaves there. And starting off again with my darkest color, blending that out with my two mid-tones, and this time I am leaving the highlight on the very tip of each of these leaves. Again, color the other leaves that were the same with the same color combination. Moving on to the next color combination here, going to bring in some YG90 markers and shading these the same way, just on the base and the tip of the leaf. And that way these will also appear as if they're kind of bowed out. I did keep both of these in here because I colored these at the same time. There's not too much to color with this particular color combination. These blend really well because it is a natural or yeah, I guess a natural blending family. So going in directly with your darkest color, you shouldn't have an issue no matter what type of image it is, even though these were really super tiny. So once that's done, I'm going to bring in my final combination here, and I'm going to bring out some BG markers for this last set of leaves here. And again, going in with my darkest color first, blending that out with the mid-tone, and in this case, I'm only using a three-color combination here, and then finishing off for the tip of the leaf for the BG72, which is my highlight color. Once all of my leaves were complete, we'll move on to the flowers, and I wanted these to be red flowers, and in the end, it kind of looked like a Christmas card, but it is what it is. <laughs> so again, just going to show you one of these. This time I am starting off with my lightest color here because I have some of this flower that's kind of cut off in the middle of the frame. I wanted to kind of create a guide with my lightest color first because the reds are so difficult to take away if you accidentally go beyond where you'd like to color or if the color bleeds, it's very hard to take away. So I decided to start with my lightest color first. Then I'm going in with the R89, which is my darkest color, just adding a little bit of shading on the base of each of the petals. Also paying attention to where one petal is laying behind another. And on that top petal, it's kind of folded over on itself, so that would also create a shadow. Next, going in with the R46 and blending that out a little bit further. Then bringing in the R27, I believe I used. Uh, for the lightest mid-tone and then finishing off with that R22 for the highlight and that's pretty much just leaving the very tips of each of the petals for the highlight. Once that was done and all everything was colored, I am going to take my white gel pen just to make sure that my lines are a little bit more crisp around, especially around the flowers for the opening of the frame. Next, I'm going to bring out my sending die, and this is also by Simon Says Stamp, but this is not part of the kit. I want to have a highlight, or not a highlight, a shadow around my word. So I'm putting my word face up, taking a black piece of cardstock, and I'm tracing the word with my white gel pen. Now you want to give this a couple of seconds to dry before you go in with your fussy cutting, because the white gel pen tends to smear and you get it on your fingers, then you get it on your card, and you know the deal. So I went ahead and used my scissors to fussy cut that out. Now I'm going to be flipping this over so it doesn't matter if a little bit of that white gel pen shows. I also die cut the word itself out of white cardstock, 
and then I will go ahead and adhere that word down to that shadow piece that we had fussy cut and I'm using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue here. You can use any adhesive. I prefer to use wet glue for this just because it gives me a couple of seconds to kind of move things around in case I don't center it right the first time, which usually I don't. <laughs> so once that was done, I went ahead and put that aside and then I will take another piece or the rest of that black cardstock that we had used for the shadow piece and you know the drill with this. Going to treat it with my anti-static tool, stamp with my Versamark ink, sprinkle on white embossing powder, heat set that, then cut that down into a sentiment strip. Now part of my first letter there didn't get great results when I heat embossed this. I probably just didn't stamp it that great. So I am going to go ahead and fix that with a white gel pen. As long as this is over white embossing powder or white embossing, you really can't tell the difference and this will kind of make the image or make the word a little bit more crisp. Next, I am going to go ahead and adhere everything together. So I placed some scotch foam tape on the back of my sentiment strip and I had a lot of white space here. I went ahead and adhered my sentiments, but I had a lot of white space and I do love clean and simple, but it needed a little bit something extra, especially because of the black sentiment shadow as well as the sentiment strip. So I ended up trimming down my card panel and I took a little bit on off the top, bottom, and each one of the sides so I could make sure that my image or the frame that we had colored is still centered. Then I took another piece of black card stock and this is cut down to just slightly larger than this particular panel, but still a little bit smaller than an A2 size card. Adhered my panel down to that black card stock and then I will adhere that down to the card base itself with, again, with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue and that is card number two. For card number three, I am starting off with a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. Again, using my Misty for this, and this is cut down to five and a half by four and a quarter. Going to line up this border stamp that comes in the kit, and I am lining this up on the top portion of my card panel here. And then I'm going to close my Misty door and then treat my cardstock with my anti-static tool. Going to go ahead and stamp out the image with Versamark ink, then flip over my card panel or flip around my card panel 180 degrees, treat the top of that portion, I guess, <laughs> with my anti static tool again, and then re stamp that with the Versamark ink. I am going to go ahead and sprinkle on some gold embossing powder, and this is by Ranger onto just the areas obviously where I had stamped my images and then I'm going to go ahead and heat set this. Now you want to make sure that your heat gun is heated up completely for about 30 seconds or so before bringing this to the paper. Bristol Smooth tends to warp a little bit and I did have quite a bit of warping but it will minimize it as much as possible anyway if you have your heat gun already heated up before bringing that to the paper. So once that was done, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out the image again, this time on either side of my card panel here. So I'm going to place this back in my Misty, close my Misty door, treat it again with my anti-static tool, making sure that I'm, I'm going directly over the areas that we've already embossed because I don't want stray embossing powder to stick to those areas either. Turning around my card panel 180 degrees, doing the same thing. Now you can see that I'm trying to hold down my card panel here because I do have a little bit of warping from the heat. You can try to do all four sides at one time to try to minimize this, but I just didn't trust myself as to like putting my finger in the embossing powder before it was heat set. So I went ahead and heat set both sides of that and I had a little bit of a gap here. So I'm just gonna take one of the individual stamps from the set and just fill in these little gaps on each one of these corners and heat set that again. So next we're gonna do some very simple watercoloring with Zig Clean Color Markers. And I'm just gonna show you a little bit of this, but basically all I'm doing here is I'm adding just a teeny tiny bit of color on the base of the leaves, dipping my paintbrush, and this is a number two round brush, 
into my water dabbing that off on a paper towel so that my paintbrush is just damp it's not soaking wet going to add a little bit of water to the tip of the leaf and kind of bring that water down to where we had added the color and kind of let that spread out as much or as little as it wants to on its own next leaves next set of leaves i'm doing the same thing i'm just using a different green here just adding a little bit of color to the base of the leaves also paying attention to where one leaf is hanging over another just adding a little bit of a shadow there going in with my damp paintbrush to add that water and let that spread as much or as little as it wants and next for the next set of leaves i'm going to bring in a blue color just because i wanted to kind of switch things up a little bit instead of having it all be green same thing for these little tiny ones you don't really need much color and you don't need much water at all but i did want to have a little bit of white space on the tip of each of the leaves not necessarily white but significantly lighter than the base of the leaves so i did do my shading on these little leaves as well for the next set of leaves, these are pretty much tucked behind the other ones, so there's not a whole lot of space showing. I'm going to switch over to a yellowish green color, and I think it's actually called yellow green. And I'm going to do the same thing as far as blending that out with the water, but honestly, for using such a light color and such a small area, you could probably go in just solid and not have to worry about blending that out with the water. Next, we're going to move on to the flowers, and I'm going to use a pink color here, and I'm going to add my shading the same areas that I added my shading when we did the Copic coloring. Just adding a little bit to the base of each of the petals, as well as where one petal is hanging behind or laying behind another. Again, going in with that damp paintbrush, just stabbing that off on my paper towel, starting on the tip of the petal and working my way down until I touch that color and just letting that spread out on its own. For the embossed areas, sometimes you may have to work at it just a little bit because it's not going to spread over those embossed areas. But for the most part, I didn't really have too much of an issue. So I went around the entire card panel, used the same colors and used the same technique for the entire card panel and once that was done we're going to go ahead and add the sentiment so i'm going to bring this back into my misty here line up my sentiment treat my panel again with my anti-static tool and then go ahead and stamp this out with my versamark ink once again going to use that same gold embossing powder by ranger for my sentiment as well and go ahead and heat set that now you do want to make sure that your watercolor is completely dry before you treating it with the anti-static tool because you don't want to drag around that color to places you don't want it to be <laughs> so once that's done i'm going to go ahead and take my atg gun because i have so much warping i prefer to use my atg gun with any watercolor panels that have warped a lot and I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down to an A2 size note card, and that will help lay this a little bit more flat, add a little bit more weight to the card. And last, to finish this off, which I honestly wish I would have skipped, I added some gold Nouveau drops around the sentiment. And my Nouveau drops were a little bit thick, and this can happen over time. So what I do is once I had the drops down, I just tap the back of my card panel to kind of get these to lay a little bit more flat they will take a little bit of time to dry but usually that will help kind of make these lay flat and kind of spread the way they're supposed to spread so that is it for card number three next for card number four is a very very simple card we have frankie here who wouldn't get out of the way so i just decided to start on card number four with him here so I'm going to use some of the ephemera that comes in the kit as well as two of the pieces of pattern paper and actually one of them is just a pattern and the other one is just a solid pink but it matches the papers perfectly. So I'm going to take my stitch rectangle die and I'm using the largest one and this is from Simon's Stamp. I'm going to cut both pieces of the pattern paper both the pink and the pattern with that stitch rectangle die also taking this border die from Lawn Fawn, and I'm sure it has a different name to it, but I will link it below. 
going to use my grid mat to line this up to make sure that the little curvy part is centered in my card panel here. Tape that down with some post-it note tape and run that through my Gemini. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere everything together. This is a super, super, super simple card. I'm going to use my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere my little curved piece here down to my pattern paper. And then I will adhere that piece down to an A2 size note card so that I have a border around all four sides. And for my ephemera piece here, this actually comes apart. So I did take it apart. And for the frame piece, I'm going to adhere that flat again with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And then I'm going to pop up the rest of it with some Scotch foam tape. And this is what I mean by not applying any pressure until you're happy with the placement. <laughs> the first time I tried to line this up, I didn't even realize that I had it upside down. So luckily I hadn't added any pressure to it and I was able to pick that up and flip that around and recenter that. But that was it for card number four. Very, very, very simple. On to card number five. So I have a piece of two pieces of Nina Solar White. One is cut with that stitch rectangle die and one is cut down just slightly larger than that. This time I'm going to use that circle frame from the stamp set and I'm stamping this onto the stitch rectangle panel. And again, using my blackout ink by Ink on 3 because we are going to do a little bit more Copic coloring. Again, keeping it pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this twice onto that panel. Again, just making sure that I have a bold black outline. And then I'm going to take a stitched circle die. And this is the closest one that I could come, <laughs> that I could find in my stash to match this frame here. Going to line that up, stick that down with my post-it note tape and then run that through my Gemini. Next, going to take the larger panel here and I'm cutting a piece of stick it which is a double-sided adhesive and I'm just cutting this a little bit larger than what I actually need it to be. Going to remove the backing on just one side, place that down onto this card panel, then make sure that it is lined up or I placed it in the right spot so that the circle or it's larger than the circle if that makes any sense. So I'm going to try this glitter duster here. So I am going to go ahead and use a little funnel that I made from <laughs> just a scrap piece of cardstock here. Just going to roll that around and make the pouring of the glitter a little bit easier. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the other side of the stick it with my scissors because this is really super strong adhesive. So it's just easier to start with your scissors and then peel the rest of it back. And I don't know whether you guys can even see on camera, but you basically just spray this like a spray bottle and it comes out like a fine mist. So you don't have any big globs of glitter. It just gives a little bit of a shimmer. Now, if it's still sticky when you touch it, you still need to add more because obviously it's gonna stay sticky. And I also tapped the card panel onto my work surface there. And if glitter continued to come off, then I knew I needed to add glitter into other areas because it is kind of hard to see where you're adding it. But it does give a ton of shine. I really liked it. So next we're gonna move on to the Copic coloring and I'm gonna be using all cool gray markers here. So and it's gonna be a, basically a black and white card here. So I'm going to do my shading the same exact way as I did for the other Copic coloring card that we had created, obviously just using different color combinations, using all grays and bringing in the black marker as well, but just adding my shading the same way. So for the flower, this is going to kind of be more gray with the darkest color being the C7, which is a very, very dark color. It's nearly black, but I use that very sparingly. Then I'll finish off for the highlight being the C1 for just the tip of the petals. For the next set of leaves, I'm doing, again, the shading the same way as far as putting the shading on the base and the tip of the leaves, but this time my darkest color is going to be the C5 and my lightest color will be the C1 again, but I'm leaving the very center of each of the leaves white. So when I flick out my C1, I'm not flicking out all the way. So my highlight is actually just the white paper. 
Next, for the next set of leaves here, I am going to bring in this black marker and I'm going to have my darkest color actually be the black and just adding that to the very base of each of the leaves, blending that out with the C7, then the C5, and my lightest color or my highlight color for these particular leaves will be the C3 just for the tips of the leaves. So color the remaining leaves the same way, same color combinations as I showed you. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and assemble the card. So for the sentiment, I'm not going to show you this again. I, <laughs> I'm obsessed with this lately, I guess. <laughs> Use my Versamark and heat embossed or white heat embossed my sentiment onto a strip of black cardstock. Cut that down into a skinny little strip here. And then I'm going to place my circle frame die or frame panel there just to get the placement of my sentiment. Once I'm happy with the sentiment placement, I'm going to go, to go ahead and take a piece of post-it note tape just to kind of make sure that that doesn't move around. Remove my top panel and then I'm just going to use a little bit of wet glue on either side and kind of just lift up either edge to make sure I don't move that around. It's in the exact same place as I need it to be. Next, we're gonna go ahead and adhere everything together. So I'm gonna take this sentiment panel here and adhere that down to an A2 size note card with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to make sure that I have an even border around all four sides. And then I'm gonna line up the entire back of this frame panel with my Scotch foam tape and very carefully <laughs> line that up, making sure that I have an even border around all four sides and that my sentiment is still lined up correctly. But that is it for today. That is card number five. I'll show you a quick look of all five cards that we created today. And I will be back again tomorrow for cards six through 10 for the June 2019 card kit from Simon Says Stamp. Thanks guys, have a great day, bye.